Equality Health is giving doctors more time to be doctors so they can give you the care you deserve. Ask if your doctor is part of the Equality Health Network today. Equality Health. Caring is back. Why is Aaron happy? Well, just days ago, his old wheels gave out. But he knew Carvana had his back. That's because Carvana had tens of thousands of cars under $20,000. So Aaron's folks could help him out with a sweet ride. No way. Yes way. With the most cars under $20,000 and our car vending machines, we'll drive you happy at Carvana. Sanderson Ford gives back. They support local sports. They support local businesses, restaurants, and music. Y organizaciones en nuestra comunidad latina. My favorite event is Operation Santa Claus. And mine is the Cave Creek Rodeo. I love participating in the Guardian Games with my son Evan for Special Olympics Arizona. Your business has allowed Sanderson Charities to give back to all these local charities. We've been paying it forward for 68 years. Thank you. Join Arizona's only professional soccer club as it goes head-to-head -head with Oakland Roots at the team's new home. Visit phxrisingfc.com or call 623-594-9606 for ticket information. Tonight's broadcast of Phoenix Rising FC is presented by Equality Health. Carvana will drive you happy. And by NAU Nationwide. Let's take a look at the starting 11 for Phoenix. Just one change for Juan Guerra's group. No Darnell King in the lineup today, and it's Fede Varela that takes over in the right wing side. And it all comes down to that middle four, Monjoma, Hernandez, Zambrano, and Harvey. Monjoma's going to have the freedom to join the attack as he sees fit. So you're going to see Danny Trejo come underneath Arteaga. Varela's going to stay high. It all comes down to Crutzen, Fenwire, and Lambert to be compact and keep everything in front of them. And for Las Vegas Lights, Isidro Sanchez is going to be very interesting in terms of their fluidity throughout the center of the field, whether it's Rios, Bushu, and Jimenez to give a support system to Pato Botelafaz. Four changes for Las Vegas as tonight's $1 beer night is brought to you by Modelo. Great to have you on board this evening with Ricky Lopez Espen. I'm Michael Watrang here in Phoenix, getting ready for the nightcap of this Friday evening in the USL Championship. Rising they have won back to back matches, but they've struggled against Vegas last year. Two losses and a draw. The last Phoenix win coming in October of 2021. That was a shootout, six to three. So what happens here tonight? Phoenix has allowed a goal in nine of the first 10 matches of the year, but coming off of their first clean sheet of the season, something that Juan Garrett told us he was excited about, not just for Rios Nova, but Patrick Krakowski as well. That duo really taking a lot of ownership in the first clean sheet of the year. And just the way that Juan Garrett likes to play, that front line is that first initial press, so it all comes down from the front to back, but obviously when you get that clean sheet that you desperately wanted, it's going to grow confidence within the back line for Phoenix Rising. As for Las Vegas Lights, Juan Guerra doesn't really know what to expect. The ability to change out of formation for Isidro Sanchez. So it's going to be interesting. The first 15 to 20 minutes for both of these sides figuring each other out. I think if you can get an early goal, if you're Phoenix Rising, put a lot of pressure and ask questions of Las Vegas Lights within their defensive structure. It is Phoenix in the red and Las Vegas with the white tops and the light blue slacks as we're ready to lock and load from Phoenix. 16th time these clubs have met. Great to have you with us tonight. Ball sent down the yard. These two teams squaring off for the first of two meetings this year. Last time Vegas won a match of any kind, 231 days ago. That was against Miami back in October of last season. A team that struggled to score goals. A team that struggled to keep the ball out of their own net. Phoenix starting to round into form. Three wins in their last four. is Roco Rios Novo, the 20-year-old keeper. Mentioned that he leads the league in 
saves in the outset of this one, according to American Soccer Analysis, leads the league in goals prevented. This ball swept away by Crutzen. For Phoenix Rising, how comfortable can that middle four get on the ball and get in, in the rhythm, play it the way that Juan Guerra likes to play? Look at Hernandez and Brown and Harvey. Those three were terrific last time out at Orange County. So look for them to have combination play. And then you have Danny Trejo, Arteaga, and Fede Varela. The ability to have that balance and ask questions and really test the shape of Las Vegas Lights. Well, Juan Guerra mentioned to us when we spoke with him this week that he would need some time to figure out exactly what Las Vegas is going to do. The only thing that he could pinpoint is he knew that Vegas is going to switch their formation at some point in the match. Otherwise, he really wanted to see how Las Vegas would come out tonight so he could make the adjustment on the fly and figure out how he wants to attack. You talk about how Isidro Sanchez likes to play. He knows he wants to put the opposition under pressure. So they're going to play direct, but the ability to change out of a three back, a four back, a five back. You have Lucas Stauffer, you have Tyler Bagley providing the width and join the attack for, 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 for Vegas. It all comes down to how, how quickly can they execute. You talked about the, the inability to score goals, Michael, 10 goals on the season. So I think that's something that finishing chances, getting numbers in around that 18-yard box and really putting pressure on Phoenix Rising. Vegas, the fourth fewest goals in the USL this season. Ten of them. Detroit's only scored six times. That's the least amount in the league so far this year. No foul whistled. Las Vegas on possession for a moment. Possession from Las Vegas for a moment. Just can't hold on to it. Goes out wide. You see Vegas trying to press high. So for Phoenix Rising, how clean can you be? They're breaking that initial pressure to get this man. A lot of real estate in front of him. Obviously, you see Varela playing in the half pocket between the lines of Las Vegas lights. So... Again, playing out of the back for Juan Guerra is going to be extremely important. It's a good turn on the sideline, but unable to keep it in play, Andrew Carlton. Novo continuing to have to retreat against this press of Las Vegas. And the possession ends up with the lights inside of the box. Bouncing around before finally coming out wide. Crutzen. Phoenix once again give away the possession. Las Vegas very aggressive early. And just see how many numbers the lights are putting in their attacking third, making life extremely. That's a handball there. Is there a takedown in the box? No whistle. And Sanchez really livid on the sideline. He wanted at least one whistle there and didn't get either. Just before this action, I think it's Jose Hernandez that has the extension of his right arm. There's an argument to be had for Las Vegas Lights, but once again, you just see what they're trying to do. Press high, commit numbers forward, trying to force turnovers to win the ball up in their attacking half. So again, how clean can this back line for Phoenix Rising picking up passes in terms of breaking lines? In the second half, the front line has to have a lot of movement to give that back line the support system. Trejo, the former light star, flies this in, back post! Harvey just couldn't make contact, and it goes out for a goal kick. That was delightful from Trejo. Harvey just couldn't quite get there in time. And these are the situations at you on Danny Trejo. 1v1, isolating the opposition. Little step over. Doesn't hit it as cleanly as he would like, but all about the secondary movement. As Arteaga's crashing towards near post, it's Harvey on the back end. Just so unlucky, unable to get any sort of contact on it. Really, the first true chance 
for Phoenix at all with any kind of possession in the attacking third. You just see the ability from that middle three for Phoenix rising, whether it's Jose Hernandez, Zambrano, or Harvey, to get themselves in that final third. Ask questions. It's such a difficult thing to defend when you have center midfielder to make deep lying runs in that center channel. Zambrano. Trejo trying to go back to Zambrano, but too far out of his reach. Something to keep an eye on here, Michael. As Las Vegas Lights presses high, there has to be a secondary movement in terms of that midfield line and that back line to come together to be compact. That's defending 101. So if you get stretched out, gaps are going to start opening up, and Phoenix Rising is far too good to give them that time and space. Well, that is a perfect showcase of it, starting with Zambrano. Trejo tried to feed Arteaga, but he fell down. Phoenix, after easing into this match over the first several minutes, starting to play on that front foot. Roots in with space this time. Joma has it taken off of his feet. Here's a low lining shot across the face of net from Carlton going wide. Pick and choose your times when to dribble out, especially inside your 18 yard box. It's going to be extremely frustrating for Juan Garras. Manjoma does good first touch, but not there. Don't want to pull it back. Give credit to Andrew Carlton. How opportunistic to sniff out a half chance. Just so unlucky. No one's on the back end of it. This Vegas side is extremely explosive. You get them very confident in around that 18-yard box. It's not an easy feat to deal with. There have been a couple giveaways for Phoenix, and here's yet another one. This ball stays on the line. Vegas maintains possession. Cross comes in, cleared away. Trejo, excellent through the middle. Arteaga continues his run. Tried to go back to Trejo, might have had room on the right side. We talked about beating that initial press. You just see the ability to stretch the game for Phoenix Rising with Arteaga, with Danny Trejo. So how compact can you be if you're Las Vegas Lights? That front line goes, that back line has to be about 20 yards behind them. You don't want to give the time and space to get those players on the half turn. You just see the, the ability to be vertical and do it extremely quick. Tenth minute of play here in Phoenix. Rising and Lights taking flight here in the final game of the night. One of two on this Friday evening in the USL Championship. Ball to the middle of the field. Not a down, but Arteaga on it. Now it's Phoenix causing giveaways. Lambert. Tight passing from Zambrano. Trejo. Has it taken away from him? Supported Taka. He can be dangerous. He is in here. Tabora Taka with a pass, and Carlton skies it. What a great run from Preston Tabora Taka. If you give him real estate, he can ask a lot of questions and be extremely dangerous. A little drop of the shoulder here. You can't teach this 1v1. So slippery, so smooth. But once you get in this position, I think he's caught between two minds. Does he go for gold? Does he play it into a path to Andrew Carlton? But if you play it into the path, you have to have information. You have to hit it extremely soft and he can hit it first time. It gives credit for Kevin Lambert to come across and put it up and over the bar. What a golden opportunity this is for the lights to squeak. 
a goal in the first 11 minutes. And having balance for Phoenix Rising now, yes, you want to be expansive on the attacking phase of the game, but if there's sloppy turnover, that leaves you extremely vulnerable going back the other way. So that back line, how clean can you be in terms of your communication to negate transition moments? Here's another giveaway. Varela pushing forward as a defender all over his backside, trying to give it to Arteaga. And we do get a whistle and a foul, and the ball will come back. Just a bit sloppy here from Jacob Bushu. We we'll give credit to Varela. Up to tempo. Grabbing all sorts from the center midfielder for Las Vegas Lights. And now a very dangerous set piece for Phoenix Rising. To ask questions of Leo Diaz in that back line of the Lights. Artiaga eyeing this one. He's joined by Krutzen, and now Artiaga walks away, and Krutzen will be the man on top of it. Here in the 13th minute, Phoenix with a chance. Goes towards the back post, and it'll be cleared away and go out for the first corner of the night for either side. This kick is brought to you by Carvana, proud sponsor of Phoenix Rising. Carvana will drive you happy. set pieces are going to be extremely important with the quality that's on the field here, especially for Phoenix Rising Crutes and the ability to whip in a ball with extreme pace. Here it goes into the middle of the box. It's not a down. Loose in the six. And it is cleared away by Las Vegas. Tonight's availability report is brought to you by Spooner, and this is a Phoenix Rising team that has been banged up all season long. Four men that they typically rely on continue to be out, but they are starting to get all of their personnel back. And that's something that Juan Garrett alluded to on our phone call. I think it's been so difficult to have just a starting lineup to get rhythm, to get confidence. It's always a net the next man up in mentality for this Phoenix Rising side. When you do your homework on the offseason, you bring in talent. Obviously, it's always next man up mentality. Yeah, you talked about he wants consistency in the results, consistency in performance, but he also wants consistency in personnel, and they are starting to get to that point, as evident by the fact just one change in their starting 11 from last week. There's a long ball across the field. Will be a throw. Harvey trying to get to it quickly. And it's interesting as Harvey's going to stay high and wide. That puts a lot of pressure on the positioning for Bagley. Does he go out and meet the, the tricky winger, or do you stay centrally and be compact? The way that Wangara likes to play, likes to create overloads all over the field, and we see no difference here. Here's Harvey again. Pump fakes, now flies it over. Trejo with a touch, pounds it off of the defender. To Borde Taka, we've already seen his skill on the ball. And a foul will be whistled here to bring it back. And as the lights are gonna be under a lot of pressure, it's going to be very important for Botella Foss to hold up the plate, to give them an outlet, to let those players come in support system, does extremely well to hold it up. And then we talked about it, Michael, the ability to stretch the game, make players miss, put them on their, on their heels. Tibor Nataka has been extremely bright for the visitors. Phoenix Children's is expanding across the valley so we can all grow healthier together. Learn more at phoenixchildrens.org. 
and you're looking for quality here from Andrew Carlton. But right on top of that 18 yard box between that and the penalty mark really caused chaos between Rios Novo and those players dropping in. Andrew Carlton swings the leg. And is headed out by Phoenix in a corner for Las Vegas for the first time. And going back to the player that we highlighted in the open, Artiaga. Yes, we've seen five goals, three assists on the year, but a play like that, dropping back, getting his head on the ball, putting it out for a corner kick, that's what Juan Garris makes him, thinks he's so special. The things that he doesn't do, not going to show up on the stat sheet, whether it's making runs, pulling players out of, the, out of position defensively, is such a key part for Phoenix Rising in terms of their success. Here comes the first corner from the lights, all the way to the back post, Rios Novo grabs it. He's been a busy man this season. Still trying to figure out that's a good thing or it's not a good thing for Juan Guerra. <laughs> we get a foul and another reset nearly from that exact same spot that the ball that we saw just a couple moments ago come from as Carlton couldn't find a white jersey. Now he hits it again. This one doesn't have a chance to get to anybody. Second ball to the lights. Here in the 18th minute. It is a Phoenix team that has struggled to score in the first half this season. Some space opens up to Bordetaka. This time, elects to shoot instead of passing to a wide open Carlton. Yeah, I think he makes the wrong decision in the air there. The Bordetaka has Carlton to his right hand side with tons of real estate in. Join Rising as it takes on Oakland Roots SC on Saturday, June 10th, for its annual Pride Night match presented by Circle K. For single match tickets, visit phxrising.com slash tickets or call 623-594-9606 for more info. It's a perfect picture how Juan Garrett likes to build out of the back. Rio Snover steps into that back line, much like a center back, to draw out the opposition. And when they do that, there's going to be gaps to play between the lines at the moment, not cleanly enough. You see, Las Vegas Lights having a lot of joy in picking the pocket and going back to the way. They were attacked, has been at the thick of everything for the Las Vegas Lights. Another foul whistled, Zambrano. Again, the guilty party, and here comes an opportunity for Las Vegas. They've had a few of these restarts in pretty dangerous locations. Twentieth minute of play here in Phoenix, a nightcap of a USL championship doubleheader on a Friday evening. Michael Watring, Ricky Lopez, Espin, our entire crew, delighted to have you on board. Carlton will take Amy slips and it goes wide. Carlton sliding to the ground as you take a look at. Juan Guerra, named the Phoenix Rising FC head coach last August. Looking to get Rising right back to the top of the table this season. They come in sixth in the league. Everybody's trying to chase down Sacramento right now. What a brilliant decision that is from Rios Novo. It ignites this attack here from Phoenix. Pass didn't quite have that finishing connection. One thing that Juan Garrett did mention to us, he thinks that this group is starting to get closer and closer together. They're spending a, a lot more time together and thinks that the relationships are building off of the field, which can translate onto the field. And that's so important. You, you talk about bringing in 
almost a whole new roster, the, the players that he wants, the players that fit his identity. So it's going to take a little bit of breathing room and time to get understanding, okay, this is how the player likes the tendencies to your, with your partner. We'll talk to see Juan Guerra. That's he's so important and so impressive. The ability to bring pieces together to make that puzzle fit and start. Now you're starting to see the puzzles come together and the work for these players and getting the results that they deserve. Harvey trying to win possession. There's a lot of physicality in the midfield, but no whistles. Now here's a long ball sent forward. Crutzen to Bordy Taka. Rutzen plays it out, and a second corner for Las Vegas. In this right side for Las Vegas Lights, it's been extremely good. Whether it's Lucas Stoffer, Tabor, to Taka, never caught on the same plane. By tendency, Stoffer drifts into that middle field, and Tabor to Taka stays high and wide, extremely vertical. Asking a lot of questions of Phoenix Rising. He's been extremely bright. Vegas has had issues connecting on set pieces so far. Here in the 23rd minute, Carlton will try to change that. Flies in an in-swinger. And we were not ready. Whistle from Gerald Flores. Vegas with a four shots to two lead so far. Carlton has three of those attempts. He decides to play this one short. Carlton. Well, this is nifty from Vegas, but too heavy on that pass. And now it leads to a run out. Trejo gives the possession away. Just not clicking at the moment for Phoenix Rising. You want your players in the center of the park, whether it's Jose Hernandez, Zimbrano, Carlos Harvey, to get on the ball, put their foot on it, move the ball from left to right, get the confidence within, and get in a rhythm. And extremely back and forth. We're really being dominant side so far, 24 minutes in. Lambert joins the party. He's got great pace, slices it in. Swinging the leg is Varela. Huge block. Leo Diaz comes up with a save. Arteaga can't get to that ball, and it goes out for a goal kick. And we haven't seen much of Manjoma getting into that final third, but it's a really clever ball as this back line for Las Vegas Lights is retreating. Varela does extremely well just to hold this run. Give credit to the Lights. The traffic in front of Leo Diaz, big time save with his leg to keep this thing nil-nil. In partnership with Northern Arizona University, Phoenix Rising FC is visiting 20 schools in the Valley this season to read to students and promote the importance of education. NAU and Phoenix Rising are providing each student with a backpack and a free ticket to an upcoming match. For more information on the reading with Rising program and how to enter your school for a Phoenix Rising and NAU visit, go to phxrisingfc.com. Foul whistled and possession goes to Vegas, much to the chagrin of the Phoenix fans. Sixth minute here in Phoenix. Our entire crew happy to have you on board for this one here on a Friday evening, Dollar Beer Night. And a fun time to be uh, along with Phoenix, a team that has won back to back matches. Vegas on the other side looking for a third win in its last four tries against the Rising.
Toronto trying to slow the ball down, unable to do so. And then a foul whistled, and the Las Vegas sideline unhappy about that. Off the quick restart, Trejo. Monjoma. Harvey. Everybody in on this attack for Phoenix. Trejo flies it to the back post. Diaz leaps in front of Harvey. It's probably the best passenger play there for Phoenix Rising. Starts on his left hand side, swings out to the right, but comes back. Been an extremely root one for the home side. You know anything about Juan Gary? He wants to be possessive, he wants to be expansive, but with the purpose. We haven't seen. Jose Hernandez getting the half pockets, Zambrano, Harvey really dictate tempo. So it's something that Wong is going to want to see a bit more as this first half progresses. You have to give credit to Isidro Sanchez, the way that he's approached this game defensively. Making life extremely frustrating for the home side. again the back line of Phoenix starts to push forward when Joma making a long run but it takes a hard skip and goes out for a goal kick pregame with raising canes proud supporter of Phoenix rising skip the line and order on our easy mobile app for your order of premium fresh hand breaded chicken fingers special sauce and don't forget to add our fresh hand squeezed lemonade Let's go rising. Scoreless so far in this match. Only in the 11 have scored fewer times this year in the first half than Phoenix is. They've only scored in the first half three of the first 10 matches of the year. They have a first half strike in them. Here against the Las Vegas team that hasn't won through its first 10 matches. This ball set in, well, actually over the seats. I thought that might reach the last row. Instead, it leaves the yard. Yeah, a bit opportunistic there from Rios. But it's all about the movement. As Botella Falls comes to feet, he draws in Krutzen, and that leaves a gap in behind. That's something that if you're a Citrus Sanchez, you want to see a bit more of that pattern play. Drawing out a center back to create space for teammates. Very important for Botella Faz in terms of his movement and hold up play. Once again, very sloppy for the rising. Unable to break that initial press, change the point of attack. Juan Garrett told us that he watches the game twice. He watches the broadcast feed the night of, watches the tactical feed the next day. I don't think he's going to need the tactical feed for the first 30 minutes to know that his team gave the ball away a lot on its half of the field. You look at to play in the center of the field just to pick up their head and switch to point of attack. Make Las Vegas watch out. Crutzen saves the day. We just see how Las Vegas Lights is trying to press, trying to squeeze them with numbers towards the sideline. So if you have a Jose Hernandez, a Zambrano, Carlos Javi to pick up their head, go out the other way, there's going to be tons of real estate to operate in. Just not clean enough for the liking of Juan Guerra in terms of the center of the field and really dictating tempo. It's been back and forth, back and forth. Glimpses in this first half of Phoenix maintaining and holding possession. Clever passing and an early chance on a Trejo cross. Harvey couldn't get a boot on it. Nice chance for either side so far. Las Vegas, all of their positivity has come right in this area. Stoffer. Touched by Crutzen. 
It's all about a two-man game on this right-hand side. We talked about being on different planes, whether it's Lucas Stauffer coming to the interior, Tabor Tataka staying wide. Such a nightmare to defend. I mean, has to be very pleased. 31 minutes in, probably the more threatening side. Probably more in the attacking half than not. This ball looped towards the back post. And two of this there from Rio Snovo to get that ball. Rio Snovo has been excellent at starting the counterattack. And Trejo quickly works around a defender. Danny Trejo thinking, swings it in, and once again, Harvey just can't time it up properly. Danny Trejo has been superb in this first half at creating chances. And it all comes with Las Vegas Lights committing numbers in around that 18-yard box, and then it comes down to Rio Snovo. The understanding the time and place, when to push the issue, when to draw out the opposition, and to go quick. Danny Trejo, the ability to play in transition moments, ask questions, and test the shape of opposition. And once again, it's a brilliant idea. Don't know if he's going for goal, or just whacking it across for a dangerous situation. Carlos Harvey, Harvey excuse me, just a bit late in his late trailing run. And the wide players for Phoenix Rising, if you get them facing forward, the head full of steam, playing extremely vertical, and a nightmare to deal with. One of the reasons why Las Vegas has struggled to score this year is because Trejo last year scored or assisted on 19 of the team's 40 goals. He was such a key cog to what they were able to accomplish last season on the attack. Now that he's here in Phoenix, they haven't had found anybody that can replace him. And you, you send Danny Trejo on his way, Cal Jennings as well. So who's going to take that weight on their shoulders? You have Botella Faust, who's been extremely good in terms of his career in USL Championship. Kubo Torres really, really hasn't gotten going. So I think that's a question mark for Sidra Sanchez. You have Desma, the ability to be a star boy in this league. You've seen the success that he's had in his career. So he has a lot of weapons for Las Vegas Lights, but how do you fit them on the field at the same time and get the right amount of productivity from each one of those players? In terms of name recognition, Las Vegas has those players that have certainly had a nice resume in terms of scoring goals, but between Ledesma and El Cubo Torres, just two goals between those two this year, despite the fact that that duo has been some of the most prolific goal scorers that this league has for their career. And it's better here from Las Vegas Lights, just doubling down on the wide play. Jacob Bushu, brilliant recognition to double down. Now you're on the transition moment when they've been so threatening. Everybody thought that that possession was going to go to Phoenix, but Gerald Flores says no. Las Vegas possession. Winding down in the final 10 minutes or so of the first half. Phoenix did not beat Las Vegas last year, drawing two losses. Looking for three consecutive wins for the first time since last April. up for offside. Morella. Good ball forward. Arteaga. Trejo. Nobody's had an answer and he draws three players. Swings it. Arteaga. I thought he was going to hit that first time. Trejo the man taken down but a foul whistled on Vegas. Or foul whistled on Phoenix to give possession to Vegas. Really interesting whistle. Hey, Jerry just goes down. I don't know if it's a foul. It gives Las Vegas Lights the ability to regroup, get higher up the field, get the numbers forward. Score your new career at Gateway Community College. With Gateway, you can achieve your dream career in less time. And for less money, get started at gatewaycc.edu. And as the lights are trying to play direct, second balls become very key in terms of 
that secondary action, giving support to Tabor Ataka and Botella Faz. So you're going to see Andrew Carlton come into the interior, whether it's Rios, Jimenez, and Bushu as well, but also for Phoenix Rising. Jose Hernandez and Zambrano defensively have, need to have the ability to double down. Once the ball goes by, your job is not done. Something that Las Vegas Lights is trying to emphasize here, play direct and win second balls higher up the field. After an early press from Las Vegas, they're back into that. It leads to another giveaway. This time, Lights players circling in the box and another corner, third time today. Las Vegas has won itself a corner. And when things aren't clicking for you in, in the attacking third set pieces, brilliant way to call yourself back into this game and get the rhythm. The quality that Andrew Carlton has to whip in a ball right on top of that six yard box. Big opportunity here for the visitors. Carlton ready to take this. High arcing bomb towards the back post. Once again, not one initially. Second cross coming in. Nobody over in that direction other than Carlton, who chests it down. Carlton once again into the box. It does reach to board Taka, but Rios Novo, easy to control. Now a whistle. Looks like Carlton is down. That perhaps stopped a counterattack coming from Phoenix. Something you don't want to see. If you're Sidra Sanchez, Andrew Carlton going down. Looks like he's grabbing that right hamstring area, right calf. Such a special player in the attacking phase of the game. The ability to beat players 1v1, combination play, get in those half pockets between lines. Hopefully he's okay to keep on going. Him and Tabor Ataka, very active on the wide areas for the visitors here. Kevin Lambert having a conversation with Gerald Flores and I'm sure everybody for Phoenix thinking play should have continued to see if they could make something happen. Rising have won three of their last four matches. Vegas the only team without a win so far this season. And here in the 40th minute and Phoenix Rising Stadium here in Arizona. Scoreless so far in the opening half. I'm Michael Watrang joined by Ricky Lopez Espin and our entire crew. Sides have struggled to find a rhythm in this opening half. There's been glimmers of electricity from both. So far, not that finishing touch. Back off the restart. Phoenix get one before the end of the first half. Here in front of another great crowd. See Phoenix Rising having the ability to fluctuate in between a four back defensively, now a three back. Four, two, three, one is the way that they like to defend. And now you have Cruz and Fun Mayor Lambert. That's going to put Danny Trejo and Madruma higher. Trying to create overloads between lines. Once again, it's just not clean enough. It's a great ball there. Zambrano switches fields, but Manjoma able to track it down. You like the switch play though. Once again, if you can get that and have a 2v1 with a Majoma and a Harvey asking questions of Bagley in terms of his positioning and his discipline, I think you're gonna have a lot of success if you want Guerra. You want to see a bit more changing the point of attack. But give credit to Las Vegas. 
Very compact. Very good in def defensive principles. Ricky not really taking any chances within their final third, clearing the ball and doing it with no questions asked. Harvey does really well to maintain a grasp of that ball. Trejo, he has options here. Hooks that one. Manjoma was wide open on that side of the field for much of that attack. And he was just waiting for a good ball. Trejo had the right thought, just couldn't swing it over there. He just pulls it a bit too much, but it's a better idea is there for Phoenix Rising in terms of the spacing for Carlos Harvey. As he gets on the half turn, he pulls out Zali, which is a center back for the lights. As it rotates back around, you see the idea from Trejo trying to go out the other way with Manjoma, just an aired pass. Those little instances between Carlos Harvey, Jose Hernandez, Varela getting in between lines, trying to test the, the decision making for Las Vegas lights in that back line is going to be really important going forward in terms of their success. And again, Space opens up. Can Phoenix be cleaner in the attack this time? Munchoma. The stutter step. And a corner coming for Phoenix for the second time. I do think if you're Phoenix Rising, if you can pull out a center back, Sally, who's the second instance shown that he's extremely aggressive stepping off his line. There needs to be a secondary action. Someone stretching and playing vertical in behind that gap. Crudson, low liner. Vegas clears the 18. Trejo. It's a better slide tackle this time. Zach Carroll. Luke Stauffer on that side. Zambrano spins. Fuenmayor. This is cross blocked. Phoenix building towards something here at the end of the first half. Just minutes to go. Just see how low and compact Vegas is at the moment. Every single player inside their defensive half. Trejo tried to make the turn. Couldn't hold on to possession out to Bordataka. Boteo. Pass over everybody. The way to beat a mid to low block, you need to move the ball extremely quick and be very clean, pulling players out of position. Really an open field challenge there from Zali. The ability to kickstart the attack in terms of transition for Vegas, and that's been their game plan, trying to force turnovers and go back the other way extremely quick. The big challenge for the back three for Phoenix Rising in terms of their communication and organization skills when they're in terms of possession. You always want to be plus one in your defensive shape. Just one minute of stoppage time. The final touches here, the opening half. Our 
Tiaga the target. We haven't really seen anyone on the front line for Phoenix Rising break the line in terms of their runs, play vertical, pull a player out of position. It's been very easy for this back line for Las Vegas Lights. Everything has been in front of them, moving left to right. So if you're Sidro Sanchez, you have to be very pleased with your defensive structure and positioning. But how do you get going on the attacking half, get more numbers, get more confidence within the on the ball in terms of combination playing for Juan Guerra? As simple as it could be, you need to be more clean, you need to be more efficient. So it's going to be interesting the next 45 minutes for both of these managers. For the eighth time this season, Phoenix does not score in the opening half. Las Vegas and Phoenix scoreless at the break here in Phoenix. Both sides had a couple chances, but nobody able to find that finishing touch. 45 minutes in the books, 45 to go here in Phoenix. Who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? How fast do you want to get there? At Gateway Community College, you can achieve a career that takes you places in less time and for less money. Opportunity is not just for the select few. Living better is for everyone. Let us help you discover your future. We're Carvana, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100% online. Now we've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Whether it's a year old or a few years old, we want to buy your car. So go to Carvana, enter your license plate, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. When you're ready, we'll come to you, pay you on the spot, and pick up your car. That's it. So ditch the old way of selling your car and say hello to the new way at Carvana. Hey, Rising fans, spring is in the air and Circle K has what you thirst for. Stay cool with our famous Polar Pop Cups that stay cold longer. Fill your cup with your favorite flavor or mix it up to create your own. Or try our freshly ground iced coffee starting at just $1.89. While you're here, mix and match any two roller grill items, just two for $4. Check out these hot deals and cool down at Circle K, America's thirst stop and proud sponsor of Phoenix Rising. Health is giving doctors more time to be doctors so they can give you the care you deserve. Ask if your doctor is part of the Equality Health Network today. Equality Health. Caring is back. Scoreless at the break here in Phoenix between the rising and Las Vegas lights. Time to take a look at the Phoenix upcoming schedule and over the next two months the team will be on the road for three of five matches. And it all starts with a showdown next Friday night against Pittsburgh and the Riverhounds are on to the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open Cup after taking down the Columbus Crew on Wednesday night. That is a very good Pittsburgh team that Phoenix will play on the road next week. Here's your Western Conference standing. Sacramento Republic holding up its end of the bargain here this evening with a 4-1 victory. El Paso, San Diego in the Trying to keep pace with them while Phoenix right in that muddled middle section of the Western Conference standings tonight. A critical matchup at the Rising playing the bottom team in the Western Conference. Looking to rise up the charts. We'll be back with more as Phoenix and Las Vegas scoreless at the break. Stick with us. More to come when we return. And to me, the most important thing is that Victor reached out to me and said, Juan, can I go talk to the, to the boys? Can I, can, I, can I go talk to them? Can I, he wants to be here talking to you guys. The message that I want to leave you with is you can decide what you can, you, what you can do. So don't let what you can't do get in the way of what you can do. And if you keep that in mind, you, as a team, you rely on each other to build the, a, a team that is going, to, is going to win many titles, is going to be 
good for each one of you. It, as a immigrant myself, I tell you, it's hard to be away from family. It's hard to really learn about a new language that I didn't apply back home. Those things are hard, but if you fight adversity with passion and faith, you can overcome that adversity and take the power away from it, and uh, that power becomes a strength that you have. For the seventh time this year, Phoenix has prevented the opposition from scoring a first half goal, second most times that that has happened in the league this year. Only Sacramento has done so nine times. We're scoreless at the break. Between the rising and the lights, USL news and notes in the upcoming schedule around the league. When we return. Sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way. Sometimes you feel alone like your world is collapsing, like there's no hope, but you're not alone. Someone is there to listen, to talk, to help you up. The United Soccer League is proud to support the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline because everyone needs support. We all have goals. But let's be honest, most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? Rising is home. Join Arizona's only professional soccer club as it goes head-to-head -head with Oakland Roots at the team's new home. Right here in Central Phoenix off 38th Street in Washington. Saturday, June 10th at 7.30. Tickets to the match start at $25, and the two-time Western Conference champions are just five stops on the Valley Metro to Phoenix and Tempe. Visit phxrisingfc.com or call 623-594-9606 for more information. Nine shots between Phoenix and Las Vegas at the break. No score thus far here. Back with Ricky and Michael. Great to have you on board with this one. And around the USL Championship right now, there is plenty going on in this league. The USL Super League announces the initial markets. Intent to start with eight teams in the August 2024. El Paso, longest winning streak in club history at six games in a row. And... U.S. Open Cup quarterfinals, Pittsburgh and FC Cincinnati and Birmingham Legion and Inter Miami FC, two USL championships into the quarterfinals. And that's all you can ask for if you're a USL championship side, just the opportunity to play against higher opposition. Bob Lilly, Tommy Stone, what a brilliant opportunity that is as you're hosting Inter Miami at Birmingham Legion. You're going to two TQL in Cincinnati. So obviously opportunities for that. And then talking about El Paso Locomotive, Brian Claire Hart, the ability to get his side after a slow start, get him in rhythm, get in confidence, and they are on a mission at the moment with just terrific performances in Texas. This is from around the league. We had one midweek matchup. FC Tulsa coming back to take down Lou City. That snapped a 16-match string in which Lou City 
had a lead at halftime. Sacramento wins again earlier tonight. That was 4-1. to one. Seven games on the slate on Saturday, including Indy 11 and Loose City. That game is at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Charleston looks to keep its stranglehold on the Eastern Conference hosting RGV. And San Antonio and New Mexico is the late one out of that group tomorrow in the USL Championship. Second half action is right around the corner. When we come back, we'll look at the first half stats and highlights as Phoenix and Las Vegas are scoreless after 45. Sanderson Ford gives back. They support local sports. They support local businesses, restaurants, and music. Y organizaciones en nuestra comunidad latina. My favorite event is Operation Santa Claus. And mine is the Cave Creek Rodeo. I love participating in the Guardian Games with my son Evan for Special Olympics Arizona. Your business has allowed Sanderson Charities to give back to all these local charities. We've been paying it forward for 68 years. Thank you. Quality Health is giving doctors more time to be doctors so they can give you the care you deserve. Ask if your doctor is part of the Equality Health Network today. Equality Health. Caring is back. We're Carvana, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100% online. Now we've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Whether it's a year old or a few years old, we want to buy your car. So go to Carvana, enter your license plate, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. When you're ready, we'll come to you, pay you on the spot, and pick up your car. That's it. So ditch the old way of selling your car and say hello to the new way at Carvana. Who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? How fast do you want to get there? At Gateway Community College, you can achieve a career that takes you places in less time and for less money. Opportunity is not just for the select few. Living better is for everyone. Let us help you discover your future. Scoreless at the break, Phoenix and Las Vegas meeting for the 16th time. Phoenix has won nine of the first 15. Vegas has only won three times but twice came last year in time to take a look at the highlights from the opening half. Our best chance came with our very first chance in the sixth minute. Danny Trejo's creating something, but Harvey just couldn't get that boot on it at the very end. And it all comes from the wide areas as Harvey's crashing towards that far post. Danny Trejo, that's where you want him. Isolating, going at his defender 1v1. The brilliant idea just to clip the ball back into that back post, but just so unlucky they don't get on the touch on it. Moments later, Phoenix gave the ball away. That was a theme for Phoenix in that opening half. Carlton came away with a steal, just trickled the ball wide. Yeah, just not clean enough for Phoenix Rising, playing out of the back, and this is another brilliant opportunity. Tabor Ataka, the ability to make players miss and make a miss for fun. Drop of the shoulder, splits two defenders, but I think he needs to go for goal here. Seven yards out, tries to play it across to Andrew Carlton, but there's too much weight on this pass. It's up on the ground, it's just a difficult ask for the tricky winger as he's coming in. And Phoenix Rising get away with one. The lone shot on target in the opening half came right here from Fede Varela as he had that ball saved by Leo Diaz on this fine play inside of the box. And it's a fantastic save from the goalkeeper for the lights. Kick save down to his right hand side like a cat to keep this thing nil nil as we walk into halftime. Well, Juan Guerra said that his team can dominate through possession. They've dominated that number, but more shots from Las Vegas so far. In this match, they had more corner kicks as well. Set pieces in the attacking third on top of that. How does Phoenix come out in the second 45 minutes to play a little bit better? See if they can get a goal in. I just think you need to get on the ball a bit more in terms of possession. We talk about getting on the ball, but you need to have a purpose. How many times when they got to the final third, things broke down and it wasn't clean. There's not enough quality that Juan Gary would like, especially with the talent that he has on the field. So how do you clean that up? Need, need players to pull players out of position. Arteaga widely untouched in that first half. We haven't said his name, so you need to get him going. But for Las Vegas Light, it's Sergio Sanchez. 
Ashley. Haven't put a foot wrong. Everything has been in front of you, being extremely compact, trying to catch Phoenix Rising in transition moments. But you want to see a bit more of Botella Files and Andrew Carlton, that relationship. I just think if you're Sidio Sanchez, you have to be very pleased with your performance. And you walk into the halftime, probably the happier of the two managers. Looking to come to multiple Phoenix Rising matches this season? Save some money by grabbing a Phoenix Rising pick em plan and choose the matches that work best for your schedule and wallet. Rising is currently offering four and eight game plans, starting at only $18 per game. Visit phxrising.com slash tickets or call 623-594-9606 for more info. Well, this has been a familiar spot for Phoenix, but Vegas has struggled in the opening 15 minutes of second halves. Four goals conceded in the first quarter hour of half number two, the most in the USL championship this year. Can Phoenix take advantage and get an early second half goal? Or does Vegas do what they have done frequently this year? They've drawn six of their first 10 matches. They haven't quite been able to find that winning mark so far this season, but they've been in all of their matches this year. Half two underway. And an early goal kick here for Rocco Rios Novo. And quickly, you just see how high Las Vegas Light is trying to press. With Telefaz 18 yards out right in front of Rios Novo. Try to force one way traffic. So, again, the ability to change a point of attack, draw players out for Phoenix Rising is going to be the key to break this pressure. Well, this is how this game started. Las Vegas was very. Very aggressive in its pressure. Here's this throw in. Mario Snovo picks it up. And I think if you're Juan Guerra, you obviously address the turnovers in the first half and to give one away in the first 45 seconds has to be infuriating. It all comes about managing moments, understanding, yes, we want to be a possession-based team. But there's no problem with just playing direct, getting your players up the field. There's always that risk at first reward mentality that these boys need to have. Time after time, Phoenix Rising just giving it away far too easy, and that gives hope for, for the Las Vegas light side. Once again, after a giveaway, Vegas unable to do anything with it, skying it out of play. And a goal kick coming. Well, Phoenix unbeaten in 11 of its last 12 at home, dating back to last season. for a third straight win overall this season. And it's a Western Conference right now that despite the fact that Sacramento has played so well, there are still two teams right on its heels, but that top three really starting to gain some separation from the middle of the pack. These are matches at home for Phoenix that they have to come away with three points. And it's not only in USL Championship, but leagues around the world. You need to win your home matches and you can scrap points on the road. You're going to be sitting extremely nice going into playoffs. So if you ask Juan Garrett, three points is a must in this match. The left channel was where Phoenix created the majority of their opportunities in the opening half. Foul whistle that will set up a Phoenix free kick. You need to get him on the ball a bit more, Jose Hernandez, the ability to dictate tempo, get the rhythm within the side, him and Zambrano, the two players that sit in the center of the park for the home side, really the engines of the side that make everything click going forward. Ball there from Lambert, Manjoma does well to get around a defender. Harvey has this ball redirect. Las Vegas to ping the ball towards the corner flag and then clear it, but only as far as Lambert. Harvey, nutmegs the defender. Good strength, good balance, goes down. But a corner kick given and not a foul. But it's the first time we've seen Harvey and Majoma play together. As Majoma stays wide, Harvey comes to that half pocket. Causes all sorts of problems for Las Vegas Lights. Start to see the ideas and the spacing that one guy likes to those players to pick up. You win a very dangerous set piece here. There's a Carvana corner kick. Crutzen 
Middle of the box, knotted down. It actually hits Trejo after Harvey won possession. Been that kind of night for Phoenix. Unlucky bounces as Harvey finally links up to one in the box. And he beats his individual mark. He said it, Michael. And he Trejo playing like a second goalkeeper, just so unlucky. Harvey didn't see that one hit the back of the net. Just see how important set pieces are. You're asking for quality. You're asking for players, the willingness to beat the player opposing them. Carlos Javi does extremely well to get on the end of it. Just so unlucky. Is that something of a sign of things to come for the rising? Las Vegas hasn't won a match in 231 days. In fact, their 11 match string without a win is the second longest in club history. But again, you just see Phoenix Rising changing shape when, they out, when they're on the ball versus when they're in the defensive structure. Manjoma pushes high, build out in a three back. Lambert shifts out to the right hand side, it creates overloads. Players in the soft pockets also gives you this the ability to play direct, play vertical. The flag goes up for offside. Begley puts it back in play. Stoffer tosses into the box. This ball booted all the way across. Harvey with space in the middle of the yard. Once again, Majoma on this near right sideline, wanting the ball, but everything continues to go to the left-hand side. But Harvey's been more active already in six minutes in. The ability to find space between the lines off the shoulder of Bushu and Jimenez. Like you said, Michael, he just makes the wrong decision. Tons of space on this near side. It likes to go back at the traffic. Results in a, in a sloppy turnover. Just little moments like that. That's what's lacking for Phoenix Rising. But to break this very stout defensive side of Las Vegas Lights. We mentioned that we hadn't called Manuel Arteaga's name a whole lot. Is that more to do with what Vegas is doing or the inability of Phoenix to give him the ball? No, I just say both. And it just comes down to the striker to just make selfless runs, especially when Las Vegas Lights sit in their mid to low block. It's very compact. So if you can make that that run to break in in behind that pulls out a center back and then you have a secondary movement from a Varela, Carlos Harvey to get on the half turn, little things like that for a striker. But what you don't want, you don't want to drop it deep into the middle of the field. That's going to make the field a lot more compact, a lot more congested. You want to stay high. You want to occupy with Zach Hero and Sally. And let those players underneath you operate in those half spaces. Essentially, you're paid to score goals. You're going to score goals getting into that into that 18 yard box. Now it's a big challenge to the Fizz discipline for Martiaga. Martiaga has been a game changer. Three goals in the last four matches. Monjoma. Excellent dribbling exhibition, and Diaz with a big left paw. And 
Diaz down back behind the play and stop of play. He made a great save. And brilliant run in from Manjone, but it all comes down from the off the ball movement to pull players out of position as it sees part. Leo Diaz is extremely well to come off his live and come out of, off of it very quickly to close down the angle. Second time he's kept his side in this match. But it's better for Phoenix Rising, pulling players out of position, having movement off the ball on that front line. And well on Manjoma to realize the space and take it upon himself. Once again, just lacking that last bit of quality, the execution to stick the ball in the back of the net to break this deadlock. When it comes to a sports injury, the unknown can be unsettling. But there's one thing that can calm that uncertainty, an answer. Mayo Clinic uncovers answers every day through exploration, teamwork, and innovation. Answers that can lead to more answers and to find a path forward. So if you're looking for answers related to a sports injury, you know where to go. Learn more at sportsmedicine.mayoclinic.org. Leo Diaz, the 23-year-old Argentinian, back to his feet. And as you mentioned, he's made two saves in this match that have ensured that this match has stayed scoreless, and they've been two saves in which a Phoenix player has been right around six yards away. And it's all about kick saves as well, reaction to make himself very big and close down the angle. What a massive signing he's been for the lights to keep them into games, and that's what you want from a goalkeeper. The ability to make one, two, three, four saves to keep your side in the game. And now in transition moments, if Vegas can nick one, it's going to be very interesting. Phoenix Rising, but he's been fantastic between the sticks for Isidro Sanchez. You do have to wonder for Vegas. Flag is up here for offside. They have some potency in the scoring column on the bench. They go in that direction over the next five to ten minutes to make some changes to get some more attacking out there on the field in a game that has stayed level and certainly Las Vegas might be thinking that they could steal three points with a late winner. And it gives you hope when you see your keeper making save after save and big time save as well. The ability to say that going back on the other way, we just need one opportunity. Now clinical, can you be in around that 18 yard box? talked about moments and how moments can be massive over a course of 90 minutes, whether it's a set piece, whether it's a big time save, or whether it's just a silly lapse of focus, missed time challenge to give an op opposition the opportunity to stick the ball in the back of the net. So who's going to be the more clinical in those critical moments is going to be the victor in this match. This time, a switch of field to Manjoma works out for Phoenix. We just saw the delightful run. He makes another one here. But too heavy on that touch. We've been waiting all match for that link up to finally happen, and Manjoma nearly made something magical occur. And once again, Las Vegas Lights likes to squeeze you towards one side of the field, so the ability to change a point of attack. We have to give credit here to Jimenez. He comes across, doubles down, and makes life very difficult. For the tricky winger, Minjoma knows that secondary touch is a bit too heavy. He's seeing more of the ball already 58 minutes in. Goal kick coming for the rising. again from Las Vegas. Phoenix having to start basically on their touchline. Look at how quickly they're able to get the ball to midfield. And again, another poor pass. Miscommunication through the midfield and a giveaway. And now we will get a substitution. Phoenix will make the first change 
of the match. Babaku Jar, Jai rather, is coming on to the pitch. Varela coming out. You're going to see a tactical change here for Phoenix Rising now. It's going to go to a 3-5-2. So Majoma and Jai are going to be the wing backs. Trey is going to push up a line higher next to Artiaga. And then you have your middle three, Jose Hernandez, Harvey, and Zambrano. A bit more. Watch out. Zaportataka swings the leg from distance and nearly put it in the seats. A bit more comfortable now for Phoenix Rising with two true wing backs joining the attack as they see fit, including to motor up and down on the wide plate. So now you're going to see them be more expansive, change the point of attack a bit more. Just a relationship between Danny Trejo and Arteaga. Talked about that with Juan Guerra. It's growing game after game in terms of training sessions, understanding how to play with each other. Danny Trejo possesses more pace, the ability to get in behind, and Arteaga wants the ball to feet. So again, on their side, Frizzali and Caro, that relationship has one step, the other three need to cover. It's going to be a big challenge for the Las Vegas Lights now. And over the one hour mark of this one, 30 more minutes to go. My partner Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Michael Watrang. Our entire team watching this one with you. Hope you're having a nice Friday. Harvey. It's too heavy on that touch. Wide open on this side. Manjoma swings this one all the way over. Jai is able to keep it in play. That's great hustle. Excellent dribbling right along the line. Holds on to it for a moment. And cleared out towards midfield. Las Vegas is going to make a couple changes. Justin Ingram and Eric Otang will come in. Danny Rios is coming out. The other change to Moritaka will come out as well. Didn't have the same success in the second half that he did in that first off. Tabor to Taka. Rios, really uninventful, unimpactful. 60 minutes into this match, the ability to get on the ball didn't really make his presence felt. So now Ingram, just a steady player in the center of the park next to him, Jimenez and Bushu, and then Otings. It's again the ability to stretch a game at, at pace. So the substitute, how quickly can you adapt to the tempo of this game? Make yourself the quality that's been lacking here for Las Vegas Lights. This ball curls out. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford, Arizona's largest Ford dealership. There's a foul whistled on Las Vegas. Or maybe a stoppage because of an injury. There have been so many of these tonight. My question is, it's an advantage. You already broke that press. You're going back the other way with tons of green grass in front of you. There's no need to stop this thing. A lot of frustrating mixed rising players throwing their arms. But it's better here from Zambrano and Jose Hernandez this draw two players. Yes, Ingram comes in late. Once again, they're out they're on the attacking phase. No need to bring it back. This time it is a foul. Seem a bit more comfortable now, Phoenix Rising. And he changed shape. Very familiar in this structure. The roles that Wongar wants these players to pick up, the spaces as well. And you can start to see them really dictate tempo and implement their identity. Jai turns a defender and wins a corner. In a nifty move. You bring him on. 
just gives a different look going forward. The ability to be players 1v1 and serve in a dangerous ball. It's a brilliant idea, but you need someone making that near post run. That does two things. Draws out a center back. If not, it's an easy tap in to get on the end of it. The Jai and Manjoma seeing more of the ball when they go to wing backs from Juan Guerra. First corner was blocked by Ingram. Second one barely cleared him. He gets pushed out towards midfield. Manjoma. Two balls that were below what you typically expect from Krutzen. Frustration there from Hotel Afaz. He steps, everyone needs a step. Now you have gaps in. Players running down here from Phoenix Rising. The trickle down effect. Both sides potentially asking for a foul. There is none whistled. Play on for Phoenix. Arteaga offside. But it's better playing off the shoulder of Zach Carroll. And now they know that that is a threat to get in behind there from Arteaga. And what they're going to do, they're going to drop off next time. But always that game of cat and mouse as a striker. You come short to go long, go long to come short. Well, there's Juan Guerra in a black shirt here in half number two. In half number one, <laughs> it was a white shirt, so a wardrobe change. Always stylish. <laughs> you got to think ahead. You got to have multiple <laughs> outfits. Anticipation building here in Phoenix for a goal. Will it come from the home side or will the visitors that have won two of the last three against Phoenix come away with a shocker? Harvey taken down, foul whistle. Is it a card? Indeed it is. First one of the match. Zali, the one that picks it up. And it's just this combination playing this right-hand side for Phoenix Rising between Monjoma and Carlos Harvey. Monjoma comes to the interior, this darting run from inside out, and there's no need of Uzali to come in this rash. First of all, you come in with the wrong foot. You go with your left leg, you have a better angle of getting the ball. The ball's gone. It's taking a lot of Carlos Harvey. And now, 67 minutes in on the yellow card. A big challenge in terms of your discipline, your positioning, what challenges you decide to go into. Rutsen and Hernandez over the top of this one. And it will be Krutzen to fly it in, and yet again, only a white jersey found off of a set piece. Third straight one that he's taken that doesn't find a teammate. And Diaz out to snatch this ball out of the sky. Both sides just with very poor giveaways. This should be a yellow as well. Like ending a transition moment. There is an argument to be had. If you're Leo Diaz, Phoenix Rising committing a lot of numbers forward, you recognize that the matter at hand, the side to go quick. And it will be Fuen Mayor picking up the yellow. Can't do this. Gets in front of the way. You see yellow every single day of the week. Now, much like Zali, Fun Mayor on a yellow card. What does this look like in terms of his decision making and his positioning? Great turn. 
Phenomenal look from Arteaga. Harvey trying to dummy it through. There was a lot of space on that left side. You've seen more of Phoenix Rising. Their first look is forward, trying to break lines, trying to play centrally through the gaps of Las Vegas lights. Arteaga is getting more involved. Zambrano, Jose Hernandez getting on the ball a bit more. But once again, once you break that press and you get to that final third, the execution, the quality has been lacking. When Mayor walks it. Now Lambert. Well, this second half has been dominated by Phoenix in possession and in chances. Well, rising get rewarded. Monjoma. Monjoma! Always wide. Just seem far more comfortable and understanding the roles that are asked about them. Danny Trejo comes deep and once again it's Majoma. Tons of green grass in. Tyler Bagley shows him the wrong way, doesn't step out and engage. Majoma takes the interior, just unable to get his foot around it. And it goes wide. Once again, you switch to a 3 5 2. Start to see the players understanding what the space is to pick up, getting on the ball a bit more, being confident. If you're Juan Gary, you have to be very pleased with the reaction after that lackluster first half. As you see Botella Falls make way and Kubo Torres comes in. About 20 more minutes to go in this one, El Kubo. Nine goals last season with Orange County, but hasn't found his footing with Las Vegas, just one. When you're a striker in these types of games for Las Vegas Lions, it's very frustrating. You don't see a lot of the ball, so your ability, I mentioned it in that first half, to hold up play, invite pressure, to lay the ball off, to spin around and get in behind, do a lot of the dirty work as a number nine. And then if you have a half opportunity, you don't need a second invitation to pull the trigger. There's a long distance shot. Once again, slippage in the midfield. Zazu fans be sure to visit your local Arizona Financial Credit Union branch to get your Phoenix Rising debit card it's a great way to support the team and spread the word visit ArizonaFinancial.org Trejo surging forward Trejo Monjoma Monjoma's had some brilliant runs lays it backwards for Hernandez Jai through the middle. Trejo trying to turn. Hits the crossbar. How did he find space there to put that shot on? Jai. What do we get here? Looks like it'll be a foul. The ball circulation has been far better in this second half for Phoenix Rising, and there's no coincidence that Jose Hernandez has been on the ball a bit more, pulling the strings from a deep line position in the center of the park for Phoenix Rising. But once again, it's not how pretty you can play, how effective can you play? Can you stick the ball in the back of the net? Jai has been terrific. You whip the ball into a dangerous situation and good things happen. Bit of confusion between Bushu and Zali. Are you going to get it? Am I going to get it? Danny Trejo gets it. No backlift on the shot. Just so unlucky. Wrong side of the crossbar. Phoenix Rising asking all sorts of questions, knocking at the door of that opening goal. And now Leo Diaz has gone down for the second time in the match. The fans do not like it. 74th minute of a scoreless affair. Phoenix threatening.
the game has completely changed when Phoenix Rising shifts formation. 3-5-2, three, five, three, five, the way that Wangar likes to play. You bring in Arteaga and Trejo. Trejo understand the spaces to pick up now as Arteaga is staying high and occupying Zali and Carroll. But once again, that man, Ben, don't break mentality. Wants to get on the ball a bit more. You can just see him willing himself to win his individual matters, set pieces. Defensively, you're going to be very important again for this Las Vegas side. Seventy fifth minute. Another set piece. Crutzen hasn't connected in his last three. Flies this one in better ball, but Lambert puts it out of play. Join Arizona's only professional soccer club as it goes head to head with Oakland Roots at the team's new home. Visit phxrisingfc.com or call 623-594-9606 for ticket information. 76th minute here in Phoenix. Michael Watchring, Ricky Lopez Espin, our entire team watching this one. Hope you're enjoying it. Carlton from long range nearly sunk that one in. We've talked about the importance of second balls. Under a lot of pressure, Las Vegas lights pull us out of a hat, Andrew Carlton. He does not miss by much. Just a friendly reminder of how talented the young man is going forward for Las Vegas lights. That's one of those moments that Vegas has been looking for for their first win this year. Jai, long run, flings it. Trejo bumped off of it. It goes out. And I mentioned it in the first half, Michael. If you're Jose Hernandez and Zimbrano, your job is not done when the ball gets by you. Knock, ball, knock down balls just like this are going to be very important for the success for the lights. Andrew Carlson's first to react. Great first touch. He does not miss by much. And he knows it as well. You get him going, you get him isolated in those half pockets. It's going to be a long night for the back line of Phoenix Rising. Good ball. One of the rare moments in the second half where Las Vegas is built. Swinger coming in. Kubo! Las Vegas has snatched a goal and leads 1 0. Las Vegas Lights FC will score by number 99, Eric Cohen. And it comes to the continuation of the run from Lucas Toffer. The ability to whip in a ball with quality right on the head of Kubo Torres as he plays off the shoulder of Mayor who missed times his jump. Textbook header, textbook ball, and a textbook goal for Las Vegas Lights. To snap it down over his left shoulder, Rios Novo has no opportunity, not even a courtesy dive. Off to the corner to celebrate, and Las Vegas Lights get their goal deep into the second half. Phoenix hadn't allowed a second half goal in its last four. It is the first second half goal allowed by the Rising since April 22nd. And it is El Cubo Torres, his second of the year. He has been a terrific goal scorer in his time. Five years with at least seven goals. 
in a single season, including nine with Orange County last year. I was just thinking before that, I don't know if he's had a touch, but all he needs is a little skim of the noggin, and it's a breakthrough for Las Vegas. Now what does this look like in terms of the reaction? Rick Phoenix rising, especially in the second half, asking all the questions, getting in behind and doing it at joy. Now you're down. 10 plus minutes left. The quality to come to fruition. You need to be controlled when you do it. Be composed and pick out your passes. Take an extra second. As Imbrano makes way in Jackson Conway, another striker that's had success within the USL Championship ranks in his career. He's going to play high next to Arteaga. Danny Trejo is going to drop in as a true number 10. And you're going to have Carlos Har Harvey and Jose Hernandez just anchoring the midfield. Las Vegas has avoided defeat in its last 17 when they score their first goal. Phoenix have failed to win their last 16 when allowing the first. Roughly 10 more minutes to go. Is this the game that Vegas wins? Their first of the year. Can Phoenix find a response? Arteaga called for the foul. Makes the most of it there, Zali. That's for sure. Not a lot of contact goes down. Trying to win an award there, the center back. It's all about the dark guards. You get your lead. The 80th minute, you take a little bit longer to get up. You're more composed and more confident within your side. Look up at that clock. It's your best friend for Las Vegas Lights, Anastasio Sanchez. Vegas gets its third goal this season by a sub. Second most in the league this year, El Cubo Torres. 30-year-old from Mexico. Seven caps with his native country. Las Vegas, a team that is winless in its last 11. Roughly 10 more minutes to go here at home. Phoenix team that is unbeaten in 11 of its last 12 on this field. The last loss came to Oakland September 10th of last season. The second half that has been dominated by Phoenix. Both possession, shot attempts. It just takes one moment and that's what Las Vegas is able to provide. When Mayor steps in. Andrew Carlton is down and he will be substituted off. Carlton had some solid moments in this one. Put in a good shift. Marcelo Lodge comes in, a 23 year old out of Hofstra. It's a fantastic ball here from Lucas Stauffer that breaks lines, and then he gets himself in an advanced position to head up the whole time. When we talked about quality in that final third, it's a lot of whip on it and a lot of power. Kuma Torres just needs to get on the end of it. He doesn't need, it, need to hit it too hard. Slow in rotation as when Mayor goes up. Kevin Lambert on his heels. Kuma Torres makes no mistake about it. What a terrific goal that is from back to front from the visitors.
these are those matches where entering the night you expect three points. You have a Vegas team that hasn't won a match this season. And now you're sitting here with less than 10 minutes to go down a goal. Las Vegas, two wins and a draw last year against Phoenix. For another good result here in Arizona. Now Vegas is going to turn into a five back. You have Lodge, Caro, and Zali, the three center backs. Bagley, Lucas Tafras, the wide backs. So now it's very interesting when you play at five across. It's not your natural tendencies to understand so you maybe see some confusion within those three center backs who's going to step who's going to drop one thing for sure they're going to stay compact they're going to be low and they're going to be very difficult to break down except for phoenix rising when you get on the ball you need to move it very fast on a movement to pull one of those center backs out of position and get in those half pockets between lines between trejo and jose hernandez to advance yourself Harvey carries this one forward. And Trejo, the giveaway, Ingram. Hernandez with a quick interception. Monjoma. Nutmegs the defender, goes down. No whistle. Lights can feel three points for the first time this year. Work to do, however. Jai. He's been so slick on that side. He gets it back. Can he get there in time? He can. Into the 87th minute, Vegas leading 1-0. Looking to break an 11 match winless string. And this is just experience here from Kubo Torres. But to understand the pressure from Krutzen's coming through the backside to go down the draw, some time off the clock, get a side higher up the field to relieve some of the pressure that they've been under. Talk about managing moments. Experience comes to the far front from that man. Torres a substitute. Change coming up here for Phoenix. Henry Uzachuu is coming in and Majoma comes out. Majoma really was a key cog and a catalyst in the charge here in the second half. It's a like for like sub for Juan Guerra Uzuchuku. Has the ability to whip in a ball, the quality already two assists on the year. What a brilliant time to get his third. He's going to stay high and wide. Put a lot of pressure on this man, Tyler Bagley. I guess more than content. Sitting back defensively. looking to pick and choose its spaces. They found some success on that left side. Trejo. Trejo. Run being made in the middle of the field. But it's better off the ball movement here. Danny Trejo making players miss. And then as Artiaga comes to feet, Jackson Conway making that darting run off the shoulder of Zali. Just a bit too much weight on that ball in from Danny Trejo. Lambert making a push. Conway had that touch, but it ends up letting him down, and Diaz pummels it. 90 seconds before stoppage time. Jai hits the crossbar. Conway settles. 
Jai nearly had the goal of the year. Second crossbar hit by Phoenix in the second half. 90th minute now. Las Vegas aiming for its first win of the year. Harvey. Fuenmayor. Conway. Gets his feet tangled up. There is a foul. It is outside of the box. Zali called for it, and here comes a great opportunity for the Rising. If, the, if this ball hits the back of the net, there is apologies needed from Jai. Head up, sees Leo Diaz off his line. Much intended, but once again, wrong side of the crossbar. So clever there from Jackson Conway. Not too much contact. Feels Zali bait in just a tiny bit. He goes down. What a dangerous set piece this is for Phoenix Rising. Right on top of that 18-yard box. Just enough amount of real estate to go up and over the wall underneath that crossbar. Oh, will it be Arteaga to take it? This feels like a prime chance for Crutzen. Arteaga over everything. Those are the ones that you don't need to hit it too hard. And then you run the risk of you leaning back. And you try to get enough whip on it. You get two under it and it goes up and over. If you go around the wall with more, more English on it, better angle. Just gets his technique all wrong. Into stoppage time, we have six minutes. And for Las Vegas, having not felt the taste of victory in 231 days. This will be a long six minutes of stoppage time trying to see this one out. There's no need for Las Vegas to step this high up the field. Now you leave your side, your side extremely vulnerable going back the other way. Trejo loses possession. That seemed to be promising for a moment from the rising. Harvey. On the way trying to make the turn. Here's Trejo measuring and shooting high. trying to play spoiler for his former team. Someone's got a new Christmas gift. Danny Trejo has been extremely active in the second half, as well as Harvey just playing this ball down the gut of the middle of the field. As this ball pops up, I think Danny Trejo makes the wrong decision. Tons of players on either side of him. Alexa to go for the least preferred left foot. The ball hits off the deck, it goes up and over. Little instances, decision makings. Once you get to that final third, you need to be better for Phoenix Rising. Harvey, long midfield run. Three more minutes of stoppage time left. Rising's winning streak. In jeopardy, Hernandez. Laj sends it out. Jai just hit a crossbar from nearly 45 yards away. Gets it back. Can he be accurate with a cross? Fuenmayor, Arteaga, Arteaga. Has it cleared away? Nervy times for the lights. Phoenix 
Hawks looking to try to make one more big build. Get something on frame. Hernandez. Tiago is trying to make the turn. Good interception from Zali. Harvey once more. Fuenmayor. Wide for Jai. Plenty of bodies in the box. And a corner coming up. It's got to come quickly for Phoenix. About 90 more seconds to go. Fans in Phoenix looking to get behind their group. Now a whistle here in the box. Rootson readies. Here comes the in swinger. Uzo. Conway. Outside of the cage and out. Who touched it last? It is Vegas. And one more crack at it here for Phoenix. Rootson. Boomerangs it out, Jai whiffs on it. Rios Novo back into the 18. Popped into the air twice, Arteaga has it blocked. A furious effort here from the rising, but time dwindling. A long throw coming here from Jai. Into the 18, headed down, Conway. No foul, out of play, and perhaps the final blast there for the Rising. Nervy moments in the back for Las Vegas Lights. A lot of traffic in front of Leo Diaz. No one knows who's stepping what. The shouts for a handball from the Phoenix Rising players. We'll take a look at it. Would have been very harsh to point to the spot. Zach Carroll's arm is ripe by his body. Did Gerald Flores allow anything more in this match? They do get a stoppage for an injury. We played our six minutes of added time. Rios Novo. There's your full time whistle. The drought is over. Las Vegas wins for the first time this season. And for the first time in 231 days, the lights get three points. And what a fantastic victory this is for Las Vegas lights. We talked about who's going to be more clinical and critical moments. Las Vegas Lights answered every single question. Phoenix Rising threw at them defensively, very compact. Everything was in front of them. Bend, don't break mentality, but once they got a clear opportunity, the catch this side in terms of transition, they did just that. You bring in a substitution of Kubo Torres, a quality. We talked about his career. Sniffs out a half opportunity, a brilliant ball in from Lucas Stauffer off to the corner, and they have their first three points on the season. Las Vegas comes away with three points. Phoenix Falls, 1-0. When we come back, highlights and stats to wrap things up as Las Vegas wins 1-0. Sanderson Ford gives back. They support local sports. They support local businesses, restaurants, and music. Y organizaciones en nuestra comunidad latina. My favorite event is Operation Santa Claus. And mine is the Cave Creek Rodeo. I love participating in the Guardian Games with my son, Evan for Special Olympics Arizona. Your business has allowed Sanderson Charities to give back to all these local charities. We've been paying it forward for 68 years. Thank you.
Who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? How fast do you want to get there? At Gateway Community College, you can achieve a career that takes you places in less time and for less money. Opportunity is not just for the select few. Living better is for everyone. Let us help you discover your future. Why is Aaron happy? Well, just days ago, his old wheels gave out. But he knew Carvana had his back. That's because Carvana had tens of thousands of cars under $20,000. So Aaron's folks could help him out with a sweet ride. No way. Yes way. With the most cars under $20,000 and our car vending machines, we'll drive you happy at Carvana. Tonight's broadcast of Phoenix Rising FC is presented by Carvana. We'll drive you happy. NAU Nationwide. And by Equality Health. Let's take a look at the full-time highlights from this match. Phoenix had some chances in the first half. This came in the 24th minute. Fetty Varela had an opportunity, but Leo Diaz kept his team in this one with some big saves. And you have to give credit to Leo Diaz, not once, but twice. Massive saves this time. It's Son Majoma as this run on the back end pulls players out of position. The lack of defending is going to be a bit frustrating for Sergio Sanchez, but not the lack of goalkeeping. That's for sure. Leo Diaz standing on his head in this match. Phoenix was on the front foot almost the entire second half. Here in the 70th minute, Monjoma takes a shot. It was always going wide, but he played such a critical role in the attack in the second half. Danny Trejo had an opportunity here in the 72nd minute. And it just came with the change of formation. You switch to a 3-5-2. You have Danny Trejo step up with Arziaga. That's going to put a lot of pressure on opposition. Danny Trejo has a better feel of the spacing when to get involved. But then again, David or Michael, sorry, we talked about moments. Who's going to be more critical in clinical moments? Lucas Stoffer was terrific on the back end of the ball, but also the quality to get his third assist on the year. Kubo Torres rises up like a salmon and heads it down over his left shoulder, down to that far post. Rios Novo, no chance. Las Vegas Lights get their goal. Third goal by a sub this season. First second half goal allowed by Phoenix since April 22nd. And the celebration was on for Vegas, but they had to handle a lot defensively. Here in the 89th minute, Babu Jai nearly had the goal of the year. Just the audacity to pull up for <laughs> 45 minutes. Like you said, would have been goal of the year. But give credit to Leo Diaz, goalkeeper's best friend. The post comes to its fruition. Talk about a character building win for Las Vegas. Winless coming into this hostile environment. Phoenix Rising just terrific in this building. So what was it going to look like? Isidro Sanchez pushed every single button right for his boys defensively and got their goal. And what a win that was for the Vegas Lights. 12 shots in the second half for Phoenix, but only two on target. And their two-match winning streak comes to an end. Vegas beats Phoenix for the third time in the last four meetings. And they get their first win in 231 days. A team that had led for just 109 minutes this year. Wins for the first time this season. For my partner, Ricky Lopez Espen, I'm Michael Watrang and our entire crew, thanks so much for tuning in. Las Vegas wins it 1-0. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.